towards um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 to until uh, 21, and we get the chapter 6, verse 1. So I'm going to read three uh, Greek words as I'll stand up, and let's all read it. If we can all read it, uh, starting from verse 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If you're there, say amen. Amen. Okay, let's all read it. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, and who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation, and to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ that be re reconciled to God. For he had made him to be sin for us. He knew no sin that he might be made for righteousness of God in him. Verse, chapter 6, verse 1. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Let's all bow our heads. I will ask the congregation to please extend your hand, extend your hand towards me. Extend your hand towards me. Father, hallelujah, we come to you, Lord. We praise you. We adore you. Oh, Lord Jesus, uh, we, we are here, Lord, to um, please, uh, uh, we need you, Holy Spirit, we need you. At the sound of my vocal voice, Lord, give me words to say. And not of me, Lord, but all of you be the glory and honor belongs to you alone. Speak to your people, Lord. Anoint the hearers of your word. Anoint the one that will speak to your word. We give you honor and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, amen. All the saints say, amen. 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 Uh, stare to your neighbor and say that uh, God, uh, Jesus loves you. Come on. Uh, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, we, we can sit down now. So in, in the text right there, uh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. In New Year, we always want something new, amen? Every, I want a new clothes, new shoes. I have the new shoes here, given by Mother Mirna. New shoes, um, new, new everything, new haircut. Uh, we, we, we clean up the house so that we, it looks like new. Everything new because it's New Year. We believe something Something good in the Philippines. Uh, in the Philippines, they love to put fruits on the table because if you put fruits on the table, they said it's prosperity. Uh, it shows prosperity, or you will have prosperity in life in the year. But that's only uh, superstitious belief. Nothing in the Bible that say that. Amen. Amen. So it says here, if any man be in Christ, he is a new. What's that word? Creature. Everyone say creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What is this? All things are become new. If any man be in Christ. Everyone say, I'm in Christ. If, what makes you Christian? What makes you Christian is because you are in Christ. Everyone say amen. So, what makes you Christian is not going to church every Sunday. What makes you Christian is not, it's not doing works or, or following of following every rule of the church. It's not, it's the, what makes you Christian is just, it's not just being good to others, but being good as a person. What makes you Christian is Christ lives in us. Amen? Everyone say amen. amen. It says all things are new. What is this all things? In your spirit, everything is new. You are new to Christ because, we, because of what he did. Amen? Everyone say amen. You, he, God is good because you because of you. God is good. It's not because of your goodness. I'm a good person. God is good to me. No. God is good because He is such a good God. Amen? Amen. God is good because, because none of your righteousness. None of your being good. God is good because He is a good God. Amen. Everyone said, and someone said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So all things have become new. What is that new? Your spirit is new ever since he went to the cross. Amen. Everyone say amen. amen. How could I say it? Because he redeemed us from the curse of the law. He redeemed us from 
we, we, we are all new in our spirit. But in our soul and body, we are not perfect. We're not perfect. We are not perfect in our soul and body. But in our spirit, for him, he, he, God looks at you new. And what's yes. that? He looks at you new because the wrath of God is over. Yes. When Adam and Eve sinned, there is the wrath of God. There is a wrath of There's a punishment in the Old Testament. You see it? He even destroyed the earth and Noah's ark. Amen? He destroyed it. But when Jesus Christ came and he put all the sins in the body of Jesus Christ, the war is over. Everyone say amen. The war is over. Because all the all our sins, Jesus Christ took it. Amen? And all things are of God who has reconciled us to him. Everyone say reconciled. reconciled. He reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Everyone say reconciliation. reconciliation. When, you, when you're mad to somebody, right? I have, I have a husband when sometimes we have a little disagreement and when we don't get together and talk about the problem I feel sad amen, amen. but Jesus Christ came already give us the, the, the ministry of reconciliation he already reconciled with us through God already reconciled with us through his son Jesus Christ amen. everyone say amen so that's a ministry of reconciliation. I'm on verse 19. To which that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Hallelujah. I verse hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, trespasses, you know, trespasses, he's not gonna impute your trespasses. That is the man that, that God will not impute sin. Amen? He disregards your sin. Hallelujah. Everyone say amen. He did not only cover your sin, but he washed it. Everyone say amen. amen. He washed it. He washed it with his precious blood. Oh, so I uh, have committed us the word of reconciliation. Verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors of Christ. Okay, let's confess now. I am, I am. the ambassador of Christ. Ambassador. If you're an ambassador of Christ, raise your hand. Amen. You're an ambassador of Christ. You're representing God. You're representing Jesus. Amen. So if you're representing Jesus out there, therefore you're special. Everyone say amen. 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 So um, be, verse 21, but he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be righteousness of God in him. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. This is a powerful word. For he had made him, him to be sin for us. He became a sin offering. He became a sin offering. Do you know what a sin offering is? Who knew no sin that we might be the righteousness of God in him. Everyone say amen. amen. What happened at the cross? What happened at the cross is he took your sin. And he gave you his righteousness. Everyone say amen. amen. So everyone says, I'm the righteousness of God. Everyone say, say I'm the righteousness of God. Come on, church, I want to hear you. Everyone say it. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God. God did not come to condemn your sin. It does not matter what kind of sin you have. It says in Gentry, God, I did not come to condemn your sin. He did not so they stop looking at your sin right now. Because God did not come to condemn your sin. He finished your sin. Everyone say amen. Hallelujah. He imputed it. He did not impute the sin no more. So he gave you his righteousness. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Do not receive the grace of God in vain. If I say hallelujah, do not, do not disregard it. This is serious. Because we have to know our identity. 2019 is here. But still we don't know our identity. If I say hallelujah. hallelujah. Our identity is we are the righteousness of God. If I say amen. The righteousness, you have to accept it and believe it. What happened at the cross? Look at Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52. Come on, give a prophet to Jesus. I want you to wait. Give me about 20 minutes. Okay, it's not about the time for you, church. Don't be, don't, just, just, just listen to this word. Isaiah 52. Look at Isaiah 52. What happened at the cross? Before they, they, they nailed Jesus, they put a crown on their head, on his head. 
They put a crown on his head, not a burden. His head, uh, they plated the crown on his head. Plated means they put it all the way down to his head. The, the crown of thorns. Thorns. You know what thorn is? When you when you when you pick up a thorn of the roses, it hurts you. Amen? Everybody say amen. That thorn there are pointed. That thorn of crown. It, it all goes to his brain. To his brain. And all the shedding of blood. What happened at the cross? Look at verse 14. Uh, Isaiah 52, verse 14. As many words as uh, as soon as, excuse my accent, okay, but uh, I'm trying my best. As, as many were as, uh, as, soon as, uh, as soon as he, his visage was so marred more than any man, and he swore more than the sons of men. His face at the cross was marred. Everybody say amen. He's marred. It means that you cannot see that that is a person. He's worse than an animal. The way the face was deformed. His face was deformed at the cross. Just look at the, at the cross. Just look at the cross. His face was deformed at the cross. You cannot see his face was marred. You cannot see that he's a human being. You cannot see that he's a human being. That his form is more than the sons of men. You cannot see if he's, if he's a man, if he's a woman. His face was marred. If you understand, you say amen. That when it is marred means you see, they, they really tortured him thoroughly. Thoroughly. They tortured him thoroughly. It's like it's more than an animal. Just think about why they did that. And he did that to you for you and me. Everyone say amen. He, he gave his life. He gave himself to be a sin offering. He, got, he was forsaken by God for him to go to hell to become sin. That's for you and me. To redeem you from the, from your sin and your unrighteousness. Everyone say amen. amen. He redeemed your sins past, present, future sins. Amen. We were not born when he was he was when he died. We weren't born yet. Nobody was born yet. But that was two thousand years ago. That he took the sins of the world. Everyone say amen. In the book of John, book John said, uh, 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 the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He told Jesus, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. It's a single sin. It makes your sin, all the sins of the world, all men. He took it. Everyone say amen. He took it. Now, let's go now. Um, I'm going to go to, uh, let's go to Romans, uh, Hebrews 6. Go. Go to Hebrews 6, church. Hebrews 8. I got like three, four verses more. Look at Hebrews 8. Hebrews chapter, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Everyone say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I believe Hebrews, Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9. If you're there, say amen. Look at Hebrews 9, verse 12. Verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once. Everyone say once. One. Everyone say once. One. Into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Everyone say amen. amen. Everyone say eternal redemption. Eternal. eternal is, is the redemption temporary? Does it say temporary? It says eternal. Eternal. It means that you are redeemed forever. Hallelujah. Everyone say hallelujah. hallelujah. And you jump into verse 15. Verse chapter 9, verse 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of transgression, that were under first testament, there were our poor might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. At first it's eternal, everyone say return of redemption. And now it's eternal inheritance. Everyone say eternal inheritance. Don't you like that? You have eternal inheritance. Amen? And then uh, chapter 10, uh, chapter 9, verse 27, uh, jump it, verse 27, it is appointed unto men once to die. Everyone say once. As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this is the judgment. Verse 28, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and to them that look for him shall appear the second time without sin and to salvation. Christ was offered what? Everyone say once. As you can see, it is appointed unto 
before you die, the same thing, you will go, you will be caught up with him. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Genesis chapter 10, read verse chapter 10. Verse chapter 10, verse verse 10. By which we will we are sanctified. The one is sanctified. Through all the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, once for all. Everyone say once. Once for all, you were sanctified. Everyone say sanctified. So don't feel it because you're not, just because you're sinning, you're not sanctified. You are sanctified. He did it. Then how come we're sinning? We're going to we're gonna go in a few minutes from now. Okay. We are sanctified. Everyone say, I am sanctified. Through the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. Look at verse 14. By one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Everyone say amen. amen. Therefore, if you're sanctified, he has perfected you. Everyone say amen. amen. That's what the Bible says. Word of the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us for after that he has said before, this is the covenant that I will make in them after those days, say that I will put my laws in your heart and in your mind. I will write them on your sins and iniquities. Will I remember no more? Everyone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Everyone say he does not. Everyone say he does not. Yeah. Remember my sins no more. He does not remember my sins no more. For this remission, and, and then if we jump to Hebrews 10 verse 26. Look at Hebrews 10 verse 26. But if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Everyone say it with me. If we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Sometimes we misinterpret this verse. If we think that just because I'm sinning, oh God, I'm going to hell. That's what he says. That's not interpretation of that. If you sin willfully and you know the truth that Jesus Christ died for your sins 2,000 years ago and you still continue sinning, that is a rebellion from God. It was say amen. There is no more another sacrifice for you for your sins except Jesus Christ. Amen? It was say amen. amen. It is a rebellion. There, there remains no more sacrifice of sin for you if you sin willfully and you have known the truth. You have known the truth and then you continue sinning, it means that is a rebellion. You are rejecting that 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 Jesus did, did, did the job. You're rejecting the finished work of Jesus. It was amen. amen. That, that, that's clearly said. Now let's go. Um, um, I know that you you are in a hurry or something, but look at this. Uh, we have to know our identity as born again Christian. Okay, amen. Everyone say amen. amen. Um, so you, you, uh, upon that, uh, you don't need to open the Bible. Isaiah 53, verse 5 says, He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we are healed. Everyone say amen. amen. He was bruised for our iniquities. It clearly says, He was wounded for our transgression. Transgression and iniquities, they're just both his sin. Your sin. Everyone say amen. But just the chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we are healed. Um, some scholars said that she, she, he was slashed for 39 stripes on his body. But the, there's no record in the Bible that he got 39 stripes in his body. But whatever happened to him is more than an animal. It is enough what he did for us. And what's amen? amen? It is more than enough. He overpaid your sin. Amen? And what's amen? amen. Amen. So let, let, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Hallelujah. I got two, three more verses, church. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Come on, church. Wake up. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. The, you know, the, Satan don't want you to hear the word of God. You know why? You know why? Because it's going to help you. Yeah, Everyone say amen. amen. Satan doesn't want you to hear it. That will help you. First Corinthians chapter six, uh, uh, chapter six. Okay, Hallelujah. Verse eleven. Look at this. But such were some of you, but ye are washed. Everyone say wash. But ye are sanctified. Everyone say sanctified. But ye are justified. Everyone say justified. In the name of 
the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. As you can see, the wash, sanctified, justified, they're all past tense. Amen? Everyone say amen. Past tense, it is done. You did it. You are sanctified. You are justified. You are, you are washed. Everyone say amen. Okay, but he, verse 17, look at verse 17, jump there. Chapter, first Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one is spirit. It must be one spirit. We're talking about what this time. He did it once and for all. Now we're one spirit in Christ if we are become born again. Okay, once we are born again. So if we are one spirit, you are identical to Jesus. It must say amen. You are identical to him. It's like your it's like your business partner. It's like your twin. Hallelujah. Everyone say amen. Whatever he has, you have it too. Because you're identical to him. Once you're born again, okay. Uh, let's look at John 3. Hallelujah. Four more verses, church. Four more verses. John 3. Hallelujah. Look at John 3. Verse 19. Hallelujah. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Verse 20, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither come into the light lest his deeds should be reproved. Now you're going to say that, oh, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not perfect right now. I'm doing something that is not pleasant in the sight of God. Okay, uh, they say, you look at here, this is a condemnation that light has come into the world, uh, but men love darkness than light. We love, men love darkness. Men love darkness, why? Because they don't want to be exposed. They don't want to expose their sin. Everyone say amen. We are all guilty of that. We don't want our sins to be exposed. Hallelujah. But, but, but he is the light. It's within him to expose darkness. Everyone say amen. 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 Look at 1 John 3. 1 John 3. I got three more verses, church. Just, to, just bear with me. 1 John 3. 1 John 3. It's the one that we said, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. But look at 1 John 3, verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For the purpose of the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And we'll say amen. Whoever is born of God does not commit sin. And we'll say amen. And we'll say amen. Whoever is born of God does not commit sin. And for his seed remained in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God. Neither does he love it, not his brother. Don't be saying that I'm of the devil because I'm committing sin. Don't say that. He says that he that committed sin is of the devil. Once you commit sin, you are allowing the devil to, to overrule you. Amen? Everyone say amen. You have already redeemed. But once you sin, you're allowing Satan to be with to be your partner. The devil, the, the thief comes not to steal, kill, and to destroy. So he has the authority over you now. He has all the right in the world to destroy you. And here comes the sickness. Here comes depression. Here comes here comes all these 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 things that that you don't like in life because of the sin. Everyone say amen. You are allowing Satan to overrule you when you let Satan to come in. But you are the righteousness of God. He did it on the cross. You already sanctified and and, and sanctified and what is what is that? You are sanctified. That's what it says, right? Hallelujah. Everyone say hallelujah. Our redemption is eternal. Uh, we have eternal inheritance. Hallelujah. Everyone say amen. Can someone say amen? amen. Hallelujah. So you see that? You see that? I will give you an example. Peter. Peter. Peter, Peter says, uh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. How many times he said, I love you, Lord? And Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, yes, Lord. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. He said, he accepts that he loves the Lord. But who denied Jesus three times? Peter. He denied Jesus three times. So every time you sin, you're denying Jesus. You didn't do a good job. 
You're going to start someone saying amen. Some will say hallelujah. Every time you sin, you deny him Jesus. He, but he denied Jesus. But this, on Luke 22, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, there are, Peter is there. After that, after he betrayed Jesus, he had repentance. Everybody say amen. He repented how? He went away and wept bitterly. When you say wept bitterly, it means he mourned. He cried. That is a repentance. Everybody say amen. He, he went bitterly. He regretted. And then, he, and then when, when he became, when he, re, he repented, you know what happened to him? At the day of the Pentecost, he preached. 3,000 people sang. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. God is not looking at your sin. He already did it. He, he bought you with a price. He's not looking at your sin. He's always, he's always willing to forgive you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Once you are born again, once you are born again, he will not remember you since no more. He did it. He did it. Now what about those backslid? Those backslid, you don't have to be born again. Well, you are born again now. You might be born again. You, know, you cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you are born again with water and spirit. So when you become a born again, you, you, you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and then later on you backslid. You want to be reborn again again? No. What you do is to confess your sin. He says in um, on First John one verse nine, if you confess your sin, right? If you confess your sin and and and, and if you confess your sin and and your sins and he's faithful, I just to forgive all your sins and his righteousness. Confess. Everybody say confess. Yeah. Confess means you tell what you what you sin. You tell him that 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 thing that you did is not right, Lord. Father, I still believe that I'm your righteousness. Father, I still believe that I am sanctified. Uh, Father, I still believe I'm still born again. Everyone say hallelujah. hallelujah. You don't have to confess. Oh, you don't have to be reborn again over and over again. Your spirit has been reborn, but your soul and body is prone for sin. Everyone say amen. Amen. You're prone to sin. So here we go. Um, uh, we got two more. Hallelujah. Everyone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Everyone, everyone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to first uh, Hebrew. We're going to go James. <laughs> hallelujah. Romans 12. Hallelujah. Three, three verses and I'm ending. Romans, Romans 12. Hallelujah. Everyone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's confess it. I am the righteousness of God. Everyone say I am the righteousness of God. I am sanctified. Okay? Uh, he has perfected me. I'm perfect in Christ. Okay? With our spirit. Okay, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Chapter well, chapter 12, verse 2. Hallelujah. And someone, uh, can everybody stand to, to read this, please? Hallelujah. They're going to rebuke you in Jesus' name. And uh, everyone stand and read, and read this. Let's all stand and read this. Hallelujah. Let's go to read it. Chapter 12, verse 2. Let's go read it. Let's go. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Everyone say perfect will. Perfect. Oh God. This is now the perfect. We can, we can, we can, you may just read it. The perfect will of God is, this is the good, acceptable, perfect will of God is to what? Do not conform to the standard of this world. All right. But renew your mind. But you transform. Everyone say transform. transform. Renew. It means that you have to you have to upload a new a new thing. Just like in the computer. You have to you have to download, upload a new thing. You have to update your phone. Everyone say that. You have to update it. It means that the same thing with God. You are sinning because you have not downloaded the, 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 the word of God in your heart. Oh. Amen? Everyone say amen. You still don't believe that he has redeemed you. You still do, do not believe what he has done at the cross. You do not believe it. That's why you are sinning. And you don't know your identity. Our identity is we are the righteousness of God. Come on, just say, I am, I am. the righteousness of God. Because so, so 
literally say transform, renew it. You have to update. You have to update your mind. Renew your mind. Renewing your mind is not done instantly. It has to done it every single day. From glory to glory. It was hallelujah. Think of real flesh. Amen? That's from renewing your mind. Okay, now let's go to James chapter 4. One more verse, church. James chapter 4. Verse 7. Raise your hand and say hallelujah. Come on, church. Everyone say hallelujah. I can hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah means praise. Yah is Yahweh. Hallelujah. Verse, verse 7. Chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourself therefore to God. Let's go verse 6 first. But he give more grace. Wherefore he say yet, God resist the proud and he give grace to the humble. Everyone say amen. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Everyone say amen. And jump to verse 10. Humble yourself in the sight of God and he shall lift you up. As you can see, he, he said two times, humble yourself. And let's say humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself, it is a, the, humble yourself. Why? Because the, the grace of God goes into the humble people. The grace of God is not for the proud people. And let's say amen. The grace of God is for the humble people. The ones that recognize who they are. That they're weak. And we are, we, we, we're, we're nothing without Jesus. He says, submit yourself therefore to God. Everyone says, submit yeah. yourself therefore to God. There, there are three things. There, there, there are two things. First, submit yourself to God first. And then resist the devil. He did say resist the devil and then submit yourself to God, right? First, he submit yourself to God. Everyone says, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Simple. Simple. As you can see, Jesus, Jesus, when he was baptized, he was baptized. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? And he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Amen? After he fasted, here comes the devil trying to tempt him. When, when, you are, when you are full of the Holy Spirit, when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, there's always temptation. The devil wants to tempt you because you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Everyone say amen. After hearing this message, the devil can tempt you out there because you heard the message. You heard the message. He doesn't want you. Every time he sees you, the devil, he's mad at you. Why is he mad at you? Because he's mad at God. He's jealous with God. He he he, he wants to know. He 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 he's thinking that by being mad at you, by stealing your joy, by by stealing to kill and to destroy you, he wants to he wants to hurt Jesus. Everyone say amen. He wants to hurt you, God. Because we are created in the image of God. Amen. Everyone say amen. amen. This is my last verse, church. It's uh, he, uh, Hebrews 4. Let's go Hebrews 4. Thank you, Lord. Everyone say thank you, Lord. Hebrews 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let us therefore come boldly. Everyone say boldly. And to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in, 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 to help in time of need. So if you're a child of God, you have access to his grace. You have the key to get in. And what's say amen. You have access. You come boldly. Don't be saying, oh, I don't want to go there. I'm shy. Okay, that's pride. That's pride. Or you can say that, you, that the, one, the one who... If you if you hear that out, let's read one one last verse. Let's go to Hebrews 10. One last verse. Hallelujah. Everyone say hallelujah. Look at Hebrews 10. Verse 2. For then what they that have ceased to be offered, because that worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sin. Everyone say amen. You were purged, the blood was purged. So you have no more conscience of sin. Stop thinking about your sin. Look at the, 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 the adulterous woman. He, she was caught in adultery, caught in act, having sex with another man. And they took the adulterous 
Jesus was writing something on the ground. Because he was the one who wrote the Ten Commandments. He was trying to say, those of you who said that you have not sinned, it's told her. Nobody told her. Nobody told her. And then, and, and then who, who told you? Uh, Jesus asked something from the lady and said, no one, no one, Lord, no one told me. Uh, uh, who condemned you? No one. No one, Lord. But the word Lord, it means that she, she repented. And so Jesus said, no, neither do I. I will not condemn you. Everyone say amen. amen. Neither do I. I will not condemn you. Jesus Christ did not come to, to condemn you. He did not come to condemn your sin. It doesn't matter what kind of sin. It doesn't matter what kind of sin. I said it doesn't matter what kind of sin, church. Can someone say amen? amen. It doesn't matter what kind of sin. He is not here to condemn you. You have to look at your identity. Your identity is she is. You are the righteousness of God. You are sanctified. You are perfected at the cross. He did it. The reason why we're sinning because we don't know our identity. If you keep confessing that you're the righteousness of God every single day, you look at yourself in the mirror, if you just look what he, what happened to him at the cross, his face was marred. Just look at the cross. His face was marred. With all this stress, he, he is more than an animal. What he did, I will not, I will not. I will not exchange my soul with that kind of depression that he did for me. Everyone say amen. I will never exchange my soul for the little thing what he did for me. No one else loved me except him. Love me more except him. Everyone say amen. We, we, we don't know our identity. That's why we're sinning. We're sinning. And then you rejected. You did still did not believe what he has done at the cross for you. That's why you sin. Everyone say hallelujah. You, you are not born again. If there was anyone being Christ, once you're born again, you are sanctified, you are perfected, you are re you are re your redemption is eternal. It's eternal. He's not going to come back again and purchase your sin. No more. He did it once. Everyone say once. He did it once and for all. Not, nothing else. He is not going to come back no more. To do, that, to do that for you. He did it once for you. Everyone say amen. Everyone say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all stand. This new year, hallelujah. This new year. This new year is, 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 this new year is something new. If you want something new, new life, new things will come into you. All you have to do is to accept him. Believe him. If you're born again, or if you're not born again, if you're born again and want to come back to Jesus, only you alone knows it. But the grace of God, God gives grace to the humble. If you're just true and faithful to, to confess your sins, He's just and willing to forgive your sins from all unrighteousness. If you're born again, and if you're born again, you just come to Jesus and say, Lord, you still love me. You still love me. Go back to your first love. First love means the one who loves you first. That is your first love. Go back to your first love. And if you're not born again, try to make a decision. Because tomorrow is not a promise. Be born again now. Today is the salvation. Be born again now in, in water and spirit. God, grace, God gives grace to the humble. The one that is willing to accept the faults, the one that is willing to confess his sins, no matter how bad it is, he gives grace. But the one who is proud and just don't want to be be submitted to God. He don't give grace to the people. He gives grace to the humble. The one that will accept his fault, his default, his weaknesses. That's the one that God gives grace to the humble. Hallelujah. Just like Peter. Just like Peter. Peter wept bitterly. Are we like Peter that says, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And then later on, we go out there and being tempted and being deceived and we sin again. Are we like Peter? The, the, the woman with adultery, that commit adultery, he didn't say no more. But she said, Lord, I got with you. Even the man, the thief at the cross, said, remember me when you go to paradise, Lord. And Jesus said, I remember you from now, from this time that we're talking. I remember you that you will be with me in paradise. Hallelujah. God, Jesus will not condemn you. He did your sin. He did it once and for all. No more. There remains no more sacrifice of sins. So we, we stop being rebellious. We 
will give us his own sin, but we can always confess and, and, and he's always just and easy to forgive our sin. And they that wait upon the Lord shall renew the strength. Now that was the days of the people, when uh, you were not, not to do, you walk and not, not to be seen. Hallelujah. Give us your help. Father in heaven, we come to you, Father. We reveal to you right now. You know our hearts, Lord. You know our past, our present, our future. We because in these, we can face tomorrow. Because in these, all our fear is gone. We have an assurance that we have that good future. Oh Lord, whatever we have done in the past, you're not looking at our sins, Lord, but we are coming to you and humble ourselves again that we're going back to you. You are our first love, oh Jesus. Oh Lord, hallelujah. You said that we are sanctified. You have perfected us. Our spirit is born again. And if we're not born again, Lord, we are coming to you. We, we have the decision that we, we will come to you right now. Because tomorrow is not a promise. We want to be with you. The, our citizenship is in heaven. We're walking here in temporary earth. This is a crooked earth, Lord. So we, we're coming to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for dying at the cross. For, for looking at my iniquities and transgression. For dying that for me. For taking all my sins. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for greater love that you have done for me. If you're the only one who can do that for me, oh Lord Jesus, then you can neglect me. My family can neglect me. Anyone can, can neglect me. But you will never forsake me. No, 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 abandon me. And I know, oh Lord Jesus, that, that all things, all things will be followed. As, as, I, as I come to you, oh Lord, to be your holy grace. Because your grace is overflowing the grace. You will, you, the grace will flow to me. There's no more sickness. The sicknesses will be gone. The financial needs will be met. And at the job, that uh, we will give you a good job or anything that, that is good. You will provide all my needs for according to your needs of your God. So we will come to you, Lord Jesus. I can see you. We are so good. We are so good. We are so good. We are so good. Whatever is so good, we are so good. We're coming back to you as your first love, Lord. Because you first love us. You want to thank you, Lord. You want to thank you for dying to the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Because you are, you are our heir. I am an heir. Lord, I am an heir. We are an heir. We are in our redemption is eternal. Our inheritance is eternal. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, how we want to have a joy in our heart. We want to have joy. We want to have peace. It's time for us, Lord. It's time for us to be kind. And we will be cherished by God. We will be cherished to be our Lord. To be our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We know our high voice is hearing God. Thank you, God. And we will represent the Father in all of Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory and honor. Thank you, Lord. I am accepted. I am accepted. As a beloved son and daughter, I am accepted. You will never turn away from me. Others can turn away from me, but you will never turn away from me. And I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you, Lord. I have a new creature. I am a new creature. I am the righteousness of God. We are the righteousness of God. Every single one of them here, Lord, in this congregation, every single one of us here in this congregation, bless them. Bless us, Lord. Tremendously, show them, Lord, that you have the power to turn things around. Whatever is impossible to you, and whatever is impossible to man, is possible with you. Show it with you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the possibility. We're looking at the hope, Lord. You are the great healer, the Jehovah Rapha, the Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides my needs. Hallelujah. Thank you for the great Lord, because that grace is overflowing. Thank you, Lord. I just receive you that I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God. We give you glory and honor to the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.